You're listening to the Arisha Wisdom Podcast, Session 8. Welcome to the Arisha Wisdom Podcast, where positivity and spirituality create an enhanced life's journey with the wisdom of Ifa and Arisha. I am your host, Iya Omileti Olubumi. Thank you for being here and hanging out with me today at the Arisha Wisdom Podcast. I am truly grateful. Today's episode is a fun one. It is all about, I'm new to this. What do I do with my kids? And with that, let's jump right in. This is a topic that comes out from folks who come into the religion who have young children. And they find out about dressing in white, misas, ceremonies, and animal sacrifice, and they start freaking out. Have you seen those shows where they portray folks in the Voodoo or Santeria religion as freaks that will go into a trance with a chicken in the air and the blood is going everywhere? Well, many believe that this is what goes on and that this is what happens. And they don't want their children to see that. I mean, oh my, children seeing chickens in the air and blood all over the walls, that is not what we want. So if you have friends or godchildren who are in this spot, this episode is for you and them. If this is you, then listen up. There is still hope, and I promise all the kids' crisis will be averted. Crisis averted. So I have seven strategies that if you commit to use these consistently, you will not only rock out with your kids in this religion, but you will do this successfully. Before we get there, let's look at a couple of things. Yoruba is not a religion. I'm going to repeat it. Yoruba is not a religion. Although it is known as Religión Yoruba or Yoruba Religion Online, it's really a group of people. It's really a tradition. So a tradition doesn't come out of something that's just done once out of the blue moon or just for a certain group or it's a way of life. So when you think of your kids, it's not like, okay, I'm going to be mom just today, but not tomorrow. No, you're going to be a mom or dad every day because that role is for every day. So without further ado, here are the strategies. Number one, ask questions. What questions and to whom? Ask other parents in the traditions. What do you do with your kids? How do you deal with nap time? Do you have to leave the ceremony to feed your kid, especially for nursing? Oh, I I probably have many stories about this. What if the kid has a tantrum? How do you manage? You don't want to be embarrassed. I mean, I'm just an alejo and I'm brand new. What do I do? What do I do? You ask other parents. Another one is you will be surprised at the answers and tips that you will get from other parents. They have been there. There is so much gold nuggets that they are going to give you. So I still ask other parents and get tips for my kids because my kids are different ages and they're different. And what worked with one sometimes doesn't work for the other one because parenthood is the biggest society in the world. Tap into that. And If you don't know another parent priest, still tap into that parenthood society. You can ask your friends, what do you do if you're going to take your child to a class and your child has to be really, really quiet, but you have to take them, see what they give you, because that may be advice that you could do. So what if you say, but Iya, I don't have another Yoruba-ish or Ifa-ish or Santeria parent to ask. 
or if you do, it doesn't matter. The next keys are going to be instrumental for you to tie this all together. With that, let's move on to number two. Include them. Include who? Include the children. There is nothing sadder than a child who feels left out. If you're praying, let's say that you're, you've set up this ancestral shrine, you've got a bóveda. Include them in some way. Tell them a story about Grandma Lucinda and make that story time and your kid will be happy and then you'll be able to be left alone or they'll be quiet for you to be able to commune and pray. This was so key. We included the little ones and it's just like I, I would tell them, mommy has given you now this time. I want you to give mommy this time. And it just worked really well. Here's another point. If there is a drumming to Chango, for example, and you have school age kids, print out something off the net about Chango that is kids related or tell them stories about Chango before they start. Or if it's a Bembe event, designate someone to hang out with the kids and have a time where they can come out and dance. Not just somebody hold them in a pen, just have somebody tell them stories about that Orisha and then they can come out and dance. And if you explain this to the drummers or the drummers are explained that the kids are going to come out at a certain, they'll make it so much fun. And believe me when I tell you, your life will be so much easier instead of sit down, keep quiet, just dance, don't talk, don't move. It's going to make a whole lot of a difference. So that was all part of number two, to include them. Number three, give them a job to do. There is serious pride in doing something and completing it and then doing it well. What jobs can you give them? You can give them little, little jobs, even from the toddler all the way to school age. Fill the water gourd. You're going to hold this book for mommy. I used to do that with my little one because he couldn't do anything. So you got to help me. It's very important that you help me and you have to hold this prayer book because if I, I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to help mommy? And they would nod. Okay, well, hold this for me. So another example is to bring food to the ancestors into Eshu. That's a job that is actually supposed to be for the kids. You bring them food, sprinkle water. So if you do libations in the morning, have them be the designated water sprinkler. (laughs) Make that job a really big one because it is. And you set something up. The key is to give them a job and make sure that you make it a super duper important job. This will give them pride. So if they are the awesomest, awesome paper holder, that's their job. And you're like, oh, I couldn't do it this morning because you were sleeping late. And I didn't have my paper holder and I couldn't do my prayers right. So next time you have to help me. And it just, it's going to make your life so much easier, but it will give them a job and therefore include them. Number four, don't expect them to keep still and know your child. I could say this because I have three and They're all very different from each other. I have a super active five-year-old and I know that from him, I will probably have 30 minutes to an hour. So I have to plan either a movie, a tablet, a game, something. I have to plan because I know that that is not going to go beyond an hour. Still, it's just not. You have to know that you may have to be interrupted and you have to either prepare for this or bring someone to help you with your child. If you are a single parent and you're trying to do prayers or something, don't be mad at the kid because his sister pulled his hair and it and she broke his whatever toy. Know that these things do happen and know that when we come into these traditions, We want 
to be uplifted, enlightened. We want the drums from heaven to come and shine down and we have an ultimate connected experience. But the truth is, we have life to deal with. And if you have children, you know that you will be interrupted. You just plan. If you have to, take this next bullet and take it and really use it. And here it is. Take a deep breath. And then when you take that one, take another one. You have to be patient and know that most children just can't sit still. And if you know this and you have compassion, then you respond appropriately. Like right now, we had to do a ceremony. This ceremony took 10 hours. I'm not kidding. 10 hours. It wasn't straight 10 hours, but it was 10 hours combined. We did break out for a quick lunch and there were things my kids were absolutely driving me off the wall. And then I remember I spoke to my godmother and I said, I need somebody to take notes. I need somebody to do this. She just nodded and I was able to take care of the kids and then come right back and pick up where I left off. This is what a house does for you. This is what a spiritual house is there for, to assist everybody. They were able to give me, like, I didn't even think twice. I had to leave the room, take care of the kids that were fighting, that the game was not working, somebody was hungry, he needed a nap, all kinds of things. I have to sometimes separate. And I know that this is okay. And I know that I'm not going to get punished and nobody's going to look at me bad because I have to deal with mommy things, which leads me to number five. Be prepared. I can't stress this one enough. Be prepared. Have snacks. Feed them well before whatever it is that you're going, whatever event, pack extra clothing. Did they sleep? Did they, do they have a cut? I don't know. Just know what's going on and try to prepare. Try to foresee things based on your kid's temperament and prepare for it. So if you have younger kids, this one is really good. Batch the toys. I'll explain what that means. Don't just pack one huge bag filled with toys. For example, she likes Barbies. Don't just pack all her Barbies and all her accessories. You pack one set of accessories with one Barbie in a bag. And then when she gets tired of that, you bring out another bag with another Barbie and another set of accessories and a cool whatever it is that Barbie has. You have boys? Oh my God, definitely with boys. You have some cars? You don't give them a bag of all the cars. You just kind of ration out uh, one set of toys now when he gets tired, which will be for mine, 10 to 15 minutes, even 15 may be too much. So when he comes back, here's your next one. Here's your next one. Here's your next one. Batch the toys. That is so good. The next bullet is be prepared for unexpected things. Our Egbe made a presentation to another Egbe and I had just had a baby. So I gave the baby to a friend of ours who was attending the event to hold. I was foreseeing that we were only going to uh, be there for maybe an hour, an hour and a half. He had just eaten. So I expected him to take a nap and I had to go with my egg bit to do the presentation. And I went to do our thing. Well, He pooped all over the place, beyond his diaper. It was just poopy heaven. And she gave him to my god sister to be. At that time, she was not my god sister. And the poor girl was in the bathroom with my son. She didn't know what to do. And here I thought that I was going to just be in and out. And I wanted to pack super light because we had a presentation to give and we had things that we needed to bring egg bear related and I didn't want to slow us down and all I packed was that bottle and a cloth because I said that's it he's done I changed him right before we got here in the car we're not going to need anything 
Well, we had to make do with paper towels. My poor son had, we had to clean up that diaper and put in paper towels until we left, which wasn't long, but the point is we had to deal with that. And after that, lo and behold, I don't care if we're going to the store. We're going with the baby caravan, just in case. And we still laugh at this story. My son is now 11 and we still tell him the story. Sometimes he'll laugh and sometimes like, mom, you didn't bring a diaper. I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't bring a diaper. I didn't foresee that. So the point of the story is be prepared when doing things with kids because the unexpected will happen when you least expect it. All right, point number six. Be consistent, an everyday thing that has to be the focus when you're new to this, you have to be consistent with your kids. This is a tradition. This is not just for one day a week or whenever I feel like it. This is every day. So a tradition weaves into your life every single day. Be creative and plug these traditions to every day for you and your kids. This is a lifestyle. This is how you live your days. So you have to be consistent. If it's something small, then you do something small. It could be you say something to your egun right by the boba before you leave, and you include your kids, and you make this an everyday thing. If you do your prayers for you priests, if you have your children, you have them sit next to you and you give them a little part when you're doing your libation, your mojubas, or your Yoruba prayers, and you bring them in with you. Number seven, last but definitely not least, make it fun. Now, I know that you want to get your prayer on. I know that you want to get on full Orisha or Yao Shun Shang Go. You want to get that going and get the full effect. And you have no time for kids' craziness. However, if you make it fun, it will create great memories for them. When you talk about something that is going to happen in your traditions, change your voice. Think of those fun storytellers. You know, I have to say, Christian Bible schools, they have this down to a science. They talk about, for example, do you know what Jesus did? And he came from the sky and the kids are like, yay! (laughs) We have to do the same things to our traditions. We have to tell it to them in a way that they will understand and really It's going to look ridiculous if you're not used to it. I do know somebody who she just doesn't fluctuate her voice, but she tries and it does make a difference. So let's say, hey, kid one and kid two and kid three, do you know that chickens are very important to the creation of the world? Chickens? What do you mean chicken? Do you know that chickens actually came down in a chain? I'm going to tell you all about this. And all of the patakis and all of the stories and things that you are learning, you tell it to them in in a simpler way. So, for example, if you are, I don't know, you're at the beach and you you could be like, hey, do you know that somebody lives right underneath the waves? There's like... There's a Yemaya that does that. Do you know that her job is blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, the kids are going to be like, really? I say, yeah, maybe you could see her. Let's go try to take a look. And all of the sudden, Yemaya is now part of their lives. And if you say it in such a fun way, they're going to say, oh my God, I maybe I'll catch a glimpse or maybe I will see this because you have made it so. It doesn't have to be anything. It could be, do you know what would happen if you dirty your clothes? Do you know what Eshu did one day? Oh, he was in trouble. And then it'll be like, oh, what, what, what? Do you know that one day he tried to piss him off to see what he was going to do and if he was going to get all crazy and he spilled palm oil. Palm oil, do you know what that is? If they if they are in the traditions with you, they will know what it is. But if not, it was like, that's like, red oil that doesn't come out like ever 
And they're like, really? What do you do? And you tell them the story. So you create it in a way with your voice to become your child's storyteller. And if you're part of an egg bit and somebody's good at it, oh my God, bring the kids. That is so going to be good. All right. Third point on this one, create fun games with the children. This I can't take any credit for. Sorry, I wish I could, but it's not mine to take. My husband does the Orisha game and he tells everybody, do the Orisha game. People are like, what is that? So the Orisha game is a game where we grab the kids, especially like um, if we're at a restaurant and we're waiting for the food to come in. You know, we don't want the kids on the tablets. We don't want them jumping around and acting like crazy people. So we're like, let's play the Orisha game. And it's like everything stops because the Orisha game is about to start. So it's simple. You pick an Orisha and you pick attributes of them and you ask them, who am I? Here's an example. I am known as the king of white cloth. My number is eight and I ride a white horse. Who am I? And the kids are like, oh, oh, is it so, 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 so? And yeah, they fumbled big time. But it's not the point to tell them, no, you're wrong. The point is, nope, try again. And to lengthen it so that they're learning as, you know, passing the time. And as they get older, if, you know, depending on where you are in your journey, you can deepen the questions. So make it a little harder because you're not going to ask a five-year-old, the same question as a 12-year-old. You have to make it a little tougher so that they can play the game. I really encourage all of you to try the Orisha game with your kids. It works from ages, I don't know, we started ours around three-ish, maybe four, all the way till teens, because we had to do something and I can't take any credit for it. So my husband does the Orisha game and I highly encourage all of you to try it. It could be two things. My color is blue and my number is seven. I deal with the water. Um, I carry an ax made out of wood and who am I? So things like that to make it fun and do games with them. If you're very crafty, create little crafty things and crafty games with them. And involve the traditions, involve the children, weave the traditions into their games at their level. So here goes. So this, we've discussed the seven strategies. We haven't talked about the sacrifice issue. So let's cover that. Would you allow your children to see an animal sacrifice take place? That is really up to you. That is your choice. We personally have chosen not to do that. Frankly, because I have a kid who's afraid of everything and he'll probably freak out and we're just not going to do that. So we chose not to do that. We don't want them to think that giant chicken is coming to get them at night or what have you. We just don't want that. So we chose not to. We feel that age and maturity has a lot to do with it. So a three-year-old definitely would not be there when maybe a 14, 15-year-old might. So it depends on the child and the maturity. Also, we must keep in mind that in places like Nigeria, Congo, whoever, someone kills a cow, they're like, oh yeah, they're killing the cow and they're draining the blood and now we're going to eat it. It's just so common that it's not a big deal. And if there's a ritual, yeah, they're going to kill a goat and something about prosperity. I got homework to do. Like they don't care. But you try that in places like the United States and Canada and other parts of the world, that's a no-go. So you have to know where you are from and you have to know your child. So just think about it, how great it's going to be for show and tell. Your toddler goes into his teacher and says that there's some goat prancing around the yard, but now the head is chopped off with blood coming out of it. Like you can't, you have to know where you live and you have to know your child and their maturity levels. So this, I will leave it up to parents. We personally chose not to. We will have them at the singing. We will have them at parts of the ceremony. 
When that part comes up, they are gone. They're going to play and they do not come back until the cleanup has been done because we don't, we know our children and we don't want to freak them out. So this is my thoughts on that. We have to keep in mind where we live, what, what society we live in and what is acceptable there. Although this is a religion and a tradition, we have to remember these things and we have to adapt. We have to weave our children into our new beliefs, into our path, so that we can enjoy these traditions and our children could enjoy it. And just think about it. If we make it a fun and exciting experience, they're the ones who are going to be calling us when we die and we become ancestors. And we want them to teach their children so that their children could teach their children. And that is how we are going to keep our traditions alive. We have come to the end of this episode of the Arisha Wisdom Podcast. And thank you, thank you, thank you for spending your time with me. Did you like this episode? Do you have any fun stories of your kids or your child or you as a child? within our religious events and and religious things that happen, join our Facebook community, the Arisha Wisdom community, and share with us. We would love, love to hear it because this is a fun topic that we're actually discussing now. For show notes, go to www.orishawisdom.com forward slash session eight. This was a fun episode. Thank you so much for listening and may all the elevated Egung and Orisha bless you immensely. Until next time, Odabo! Thank you for listening to the Orisha Wisdom Podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes at orishawisdom.com forward slash podcast. Can't get enough of Orisha Wisdom? Check us out at orishawisdom.com and subscribe to our community. Remember, the wisdom of Ifa and Orisha is all around us. Be blessed, and until next time.